Hey, so we are in a brand spanking new series called Moving Mountains, and this series is all about prayer, and uh, it, it is, it, I'm so looking forward to it because it's fitting in our season as a church, and um, I think that we really need to come before God in this season, this time uh, of, of growth, this, this time of building, this time of winning people for Jesus, and uh, I think it is important for us to get on our knees and to pray before the the one who ultimately is in control. Now, living here in North America, right, in, in eastern Ontario, I would say, I don't want to step on your toes, but I would say that um, we pray pretty, like, fluffy prayers. <laughs> and what, about you, what I mean by that, it, 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 take for example, um, God, can you just, uh, like, bless my day? Can, God, can you bless my day? And, uh, like, that's fluffy. Like, that, I, honestly, Kind of fluffy. It's it's okay, but uh, God, can you please give me? Uh, uh, you know, let's let's pray before our trip, and can you please give us traveling mercies, which is which is okay, but it's just, it's just like it's it's fluffy. Like it's 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 okay to pray those things, but um, God, can you put like your hedge of protection around me as I go about my day? And and it's it's just that the. I want to learn how to pray moving mountain types of prayers. And moving mountain types of prayers, they are not fluffy prayers. They, they are substantial. They are, what they are is they're actually kind of scary. Because moving mountain types of prayers, they push you out of your comfort zone and push you into doing something maybe you've never done before. And I think, I think that's where God really uses us and uses our family as a church. And uh, I believe, uh, you know, over the next three weeks that we are going to, to unpack some critical understanding about, about the way in which we should pray, uh, the, the confidence that we can have in, in prayer and approaching God, and that he hears our prayers when we give our requests over to him, no matter how big or how small, and we can, we can give those things over to him. And so, and so we have a theme verse for this series that we're kind of going to unpack over the next three weeks, and, uh, and it's found here. It's first. John 5, 14, and 15, and here's how it reads. It says this, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask for anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. And, and I think this is key for us. And what we're going to do is, is break this down into three specific sections and tackle one of these each Week. Now, I'm excited about this series because I think it might be, I think it might be an anchor teaching for some of you in your walk with Jesus. I, I remember, you know, growing up and going to church and going to conferences and, and being in youth group and, and, then, and then, you know, hearing preachers. And there, there are key messages I have, uh, God's really spoken to me through in my life. And, and my prayer is that, is that this would be revealing to you. This might be one of those life-changing teachings for you in this series in how you approach to God, uh, how you approach God, but also how you allow him to move mountains in your life through prayer. And uh, today in week one, we are going to hone in on the first part of this, this verse here, and it is the confidence we have in approaching God. Approaching God with confidence. And uh, here's the deal. I actually don't think that many of us approach God in confidence. I don't think we are confident when we go and we pray to God. And, and, and I, I want to really, really tackle the idea of why, why, why is that so? Like, why aren't we confident when we approach God? And I think David, he has the answer for us here today. And so I want to look into one of David's prayers. We had our theme verse in 1 John, but one of David's prayers is found in Psalm 139. And he gives us insight into maybe why we don't approach God in confidence in our prayer life. And so Psalm 139, 23 to 24 reads like this. David prays this, search me, God, know my heart, test me, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me into the way everlasting. 
And uh, in order to digest this, I'm going to break this prayer down into three sections here today. This prayer that David prayed, and uh, in Psalm 139, we're going to break it down into three different parts, and we're going to talk through each of these. And I think I think this is going to this is going to equip you to go to God in a confident way. Um, because David really lays this out for us in, in a really easy and practical way. And so here's the first part of this prayer that David points out. He says, search my heart. Right at the beginning here, verse 23. Search me, God, and know my heart. Sur- search my heart is what David says. And, 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 and why would we need God to search our heart? I mean, I, I, I really believe that we think that we have a good heart. I mean, my, my heart is right. Uh, my heart, his, her, his, his heart was in the right place when he made that decision. Uh, and, and, and just that, that person has a good heart. She has a good heart. Or that, that old, older lady, she's just a, she has, her heart is so pure. It's so good. No, it's not. It's wicked, right? It's, it's wicked. That's what the Bible actually says. If we're going to be 100% truthful here, we've heard this before. Jeremiah 17, 9, it says the human heart is the most deceitful of all things. It is desperately wicked. You don't have a good heart, especially before Jesus. Our hearts are not pure. Our hearts are actually deceitful and desperately wicked. And, and who really knows how bad this is? See, without Jesus, <laughs> we, we are, we're just like liars. Now, now let's, see, let's see a show of hands. How many people in here, how many people in here would say that they're liars? Show of hands. Show, look, honest, let, put your hand up if you think you're a liar. All right, you just own that, own that today. All right, hands up, everybody. Okay, now here's the deal. Look around the room. This is where it gets a little awkward. Look around the room. See and, and see the people who don't have their hands up. All right, here's what I want you to do. Those people who have their hands up, I want you to look at the people who don't have their hands up, and here's what I want you to say. Liar, liar, pants on fire, right? You, you are liars. You're lying right now because we have deceitful hearts, and we, are, we actually, the, the greatest lie we believe is about ourselves. We deceive ourselves. We think that we have it all together. We think that we can control things. We think that our hearts are pure. We think that our intentions are good. We think that we are better than we actually are sometimes, right? Like, I don't, I don't gossip, but I, I, I just like, I just share these, these requests and ask people for their prayer requests, but I don't, I just, and, and I share them with other people, but it's not, it's not, it's not gossip or, or I, I am, I am truly going to be, um, you know, I, you, you should see how much we give. You, you should see how much we give to the church and, and we give this amount and we are, we are giving this away and, and you should see what I gave to this organization and, and is it really happening here? I, I'm just going to have, uh, I'm just going to have one drink today, and uh, I'm going to, no, no, I haven't had too many drinks. I've just had uh, just one or two, I think. I, I think that's, uh, I only had that many drinks tonight, and, and I'm okay to, 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 to drive home, or, or, or you know what? I, just because I really like to look at myself in the mirror doesn't, doesn't I'm not a narcissist. No, 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 no. no I, I just take selfies like 10 times a day, and, and it's, no, 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 but I'm, I'm, I am, my heart is right. Like, it's in, it's in the right place. And we deceive ourselves, right? We, we, we lie to ourselves about this stuff. And, and every time we make a bad choice, it's somehow, some way, we believe that our intentions were, were good. And when you pray, search my heart, let me tell you, it is a moving mountain type of prayer. Search my heart, God. Because God is going to show you things in your heart that are not pure, that are not truthful, that are not right. And not to be cruel. He's not doing that to, to, to show you like that, how bad or, or, or rude or whatever. He's not, he's not doing it for that reason. He's showing you that so that you can grow in intimacy and ultimately get deeper and deeper in the waters he's calling you to, right? It's to grow your relationship with him. And he wants your, his, his Holy Spirit to transform you and to mold you and to shape you. And so David says, pray this, search, search my heart. Because it needs to be transformed. And ultimately, to go confidently before God, you need to have a pure heart, right? Which, which brings us to the second part of this prayer that David prayers. It says, reveal my fears. Test me, he says, and know my anxious thoughts. Know my anxious thoughts. See, what makes you afraid? 
What, 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 is, what are those things that makes you afraid? Is it, uh, like, is it, is it spiders? Uh, is, it, is it snakes? Like, yes to both of those, right? Uh, is it, uh, I, I don't know, is it um, an argument with so-and-so? Is, is it confrontation? You know, it's, I, I just, <laughs> it, it's funny because this just happened the other day. So, so my kids, th- their bathroom there, they have, they have a, a bathroom that they use, and in their bathroom, they have a, um, a bathtub with a shower and a shower curtain. And I've been this way my whole life, And if that shower curtain is closed, even if it's not closed, just partially closed, I always check behind the shower curtain. And and I've never, ever seen someone hiding back there. I've never, ever found someone. But somehow, some way, I always believe that there just might be that guy that's hiding behind the shower curtain. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's absolutely bogus, right? But it's something I always do. I'm 37. I still do that. It's absolutely crazy, right? And, and what internally makes you afraid? What, what internally makes you anxious? What are the things that you, that you worry about? Is it, is it the worry of the unknown? Is it the worry of that you're not going to be married by a certain date? Is, is it the worry of you're going to disappoint your parents with, with the grades that you got? Is it, is it the worry that you're not going to get a job? Is it, is it the worry that, you're, that you are in the marriage that you're in? Is it, is it the worry that you're not going to make that bill payment that you need to make? Or What is, what is the worry in your life. What are you anxious about, David says? See, why, why, why does this matter? Why does David, why does he ask this? Why, why, why is this here? Why, why is he including this in his prayer? Why is he saying, show me my anxious thoughts? I, I, I would say, I would say he's doing this because what we feel fear the most in is, is really where we have confidence in God the least. And we're not confident. And so we're fearful. And we're fearful and we're anxious about whatever it is. And God is possibly missing in those areas in our life. We haven't turned them over to him. And this is, this is a real issue. Like, it's not only an issue in everybody else's life. It's, it's an issue. It's a real issue in mine. Like, I... I <laughs> Because in the church and my role, I, I cannot be driven by fear. And, and let me tell you, if I'm honest, like sometimes I am. But I can't be. I, I have to be led by faith, not fear, because without faith, it's, it's impossible to please God, right? It's impossible to please, please God. I have to lean into what, what God is calling me to do. And there are some things I really believe God wants the church to do and we ought to be doing. And there are big types of things. There are moving mountain types of things for us as a family here. But I can't guarantee it's always going to work. God leads me to do it, but I can't guarantee it's going to play out maybe, maybe the way I thought it was going to, right? Right? And because of that, often my fear will keep me from being obedient to what God is calling. And I'm just, I'm just telling you, maybe, maybe more than you want to know, maybe you don't want to hear this from your pastor, but if I'm absolutely transparent with you, it's super meaningful to me. And, and as, I'm, as I'm going through this this week, and as, as I'm kind of praying to God, and, and he's revealing stuff to me this week, it's something that he's really pressing into me personally in my life. See, ultimately, I I have to love pleasing God and being obedient to him more than I'm afraid of failing. And ultimately, if I'm honest, more than trying to please you, the church family. He says, says, reveal your fears. Give those things over to God. And when you pray this, God will reveal things to you about yourself that may ha- may you, maybe you've not been willing or wanting to deal with these things for, for years. And you've been living with it in fear. Because the most common lie we tell ourselves is that it's not an issue for me. And I can, I can do this. I can get through it myself. See, David continues on in the, in the third part of this prayer in, Ephesians, or in, in Psalm 139. He says, expose my sin. See, verse 24 says, see if there is anything offensive, any offensive way in me. 
See if there's any offensive way in me. Is there, is there something that is, that is not right? Is there something that's, that is off? And, and the courage it takes to pray that kind of prayer? God, c- can you tell me if I got sin? Like, do, can you expose here my, my sin in my life? That is a moving mountain prayer. That, that is a courageous prayer. That is a difficult prayer. That is a life-altering prayer. Show me, God. Is there anything inconsistent in my life with the truth of your word? Is is there anything that I am doing that doesn't line up with clearly with what the Bible says? Is there something that I believe that is not in here or I don't want to believe that is in here, right? what, What is the thing that I'm addicted to? What is the thing that I choose to do that I know I shouldn't? What what are those things? Expose those things. Expose that in my life, God. See, it's just funny because oftentimes we can see the sin in other people, but it's really hard to see your sin in the mirror, isn't it? Isn't it? I I used to be a youth pastor uh, in New York State, and when I was a youth pastor, I... uh, I remember, like, I would be driving kids around, and uh, there's another church close by. I'd rent, I, I'd use this church as we kind of like rent their church van. They had a church van, and so I'd be driving these kids around. Sometimes I'd pick them up before youth, and uh, and I remember like seeing this 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 car get pulled over by one of the state troopers, and uh, we kind of like honestly we kind of made fun of them. Like they they got pulled over for speeding or whatever it was, and we saw that car, and, and I had a van full of teens, and we went by, and I was like, oh man, suckers, like kind of make a joke of it, and everyone like laughed or whatever, and we, we kept on going to our destination. Well, fast forward a few months, and I'm taking the same group of teens to uh, Kingswood University. So they're, we're, they're, they're, they're a group of seniors from the church. I'm going to show them like one of our, one of our Christian colleges in our uh, denomination, right? And so we are driving out to New Brunswick. It's a long trip and uh, I'm, I'm taking that same van and we're going all the way out there and uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of coming over a hill, going down a hill and when you've been driving for like over 10 hours with a van full of teens, Sometimes you just want to get to where you're going as quickly as possible. And so I'm driving, driving this van. I'm going a little bit faster than the speed limit. And, uh, and lo and behold, I zip past a cop, uh, an RCMP, right, out in New Brunswick. And I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, because I, I see that the speed I'm going is only a few kilometers over the speed limit. But, but what happened? I got pulled over, and let me tell you, for the rest of the four years that I pastored at that church, I heard from these teens and the parents of these teens about Pastor Ben when he got the speeding ticket with a van full of teens. And I'm kind of like, as I'm sitting there and these teens are like snickering in the back seat, I'm reflecting on the comments I made about that, 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 that sucker who got pulled over in New York State, right? That, that's, that's what I'm thinking. And it's, it's amazing because because we tend to accuse others, but we excuse ourselves. We, we can see the sin in other people, but we don't really want to address our own. And, and here's some practical insights for this. Here, here's, how you, here's how you really get into the honest truth about, about maybe some sin in your life or what's actually going on. Maybe some self-awareness instead of self-deception, right? So here's how you expose your sin. Number one, ask these questions. Are people trying to tell me something? Have people made like just, just, just comments to you? Or, or have, have you heard things from different people kind of maybe about a certain situation or a decision that you keep making or something you're trying to, I don't know, maybe number two, rationalize? So what, what have I been rationalizing? When someone actually does bring something up to you, do you defend it? Are, are you just the person who no matter what, you always rationalize whatever you get into? Is, is that you? Like, I, I'm guilty. I, I, absolutely guilty. Obviously, the pastor can't sin, right? It, it, obviously, obviously, the pastor can't sin. He, he's up here. He's not, he's, he's not, he's not part of the, the sinning culture. And, and, and we rationalize stuff, right? Or number three, ask this question here. What am I most defensive about? Is, is, that, is that convicting or what, right? 
What are people talking to you about? What are you rationalizing? And then what do you defend? What, why are you so defensive about it? If it's, if it, you shouldn't be defending it if it's okay, right? What, what is actually going on here? And, and let me tell you, this is why life groups are so vitally important for us. And if you're not in one, like, you can make whatever decisions that you want to make in your life, and you can, you can, you can rationalize whatever you want to, right? Like, you can, you can say that I, I ought to be spending my time and getting my kids here or there, or my schedule's too busy, or we want to spend this, or we don't want to be a part of that, or... But I guess, I guess my question, is there a deeper issue why you wouldn't want to be a part of a life group? Is, is it because you don't want maybe some of these, some of these things that, that David has in here to be addressed? See, together as the community of God, I love that I can go to my life group, even as the pastor, right? And say, you know what, I, I, I need help. You know what the most amazing thing is sometimes? When, I, when I'm sitting in my life group and, and we, uh, we, we sit around here and I'm hearing someone else share uh, something that they're struggling with. And then someone else pipes up and they show a little bit of their feet, right? And their life and they're open and honest. Say, I'm, I'm actually really struggling with this. I could use prayer for this. You know what it makes me want to do? It, wants ma- it makes me want to be open and honest as well because it's, it's a safe place. And the more honest and open we are, the deeper we go and the sharper we get, right? I love, I love that life groups is a place where people can get transformed, ultimately where they can grow into who God wants them to be. We all need to help one another search our hearts, reveal our fears, expose our sins before God. See, when I, when I pull all of what I just talked about, when we, when we pull this whole teaching together, you know what it points to? It ultimately points to my need for Jesus. And I think oftentimes we're not confident in bringing things to God because we know we're guilty of who we actually are. And when I honestly, when I honestly open my weaknesses to God, I can be confident in bringing things to Him, right? See, we can have confidence in approaching God in prayer. And when we confidently come before God, it's his kids, open and honest. He will move mountains on our behalf. Let's pray. God, we want to pray that simple prayer right now. God, we know that there are many times where we are dishonest with ourselves, that our hearts are not in a pure place. Father, would you, would you, would you just... Would you search our heart? God, would you, would you reveal the things that we, we fear the most because ultimately, the things we fear the most just kind of show us our lack of confidence in you? God, God would you expose maybe the sin in our life and corporately as a church, if there's wrongs that we've done, God, ultimately we want, to, we, want to, we want this to be a game changer moment in our life and in the life of our church, God, into this new fresh season. Father, we pray that you would move mountains and we, we, we think about things like this building. We think about things like our, our communities, God. We think about things like our, our, our people, like our neighbors who, who, who ultimately need you, God. We pray that you would move mountains in the name of Jesus. Father, work in our lives, we pray. Amen.